When I was a child, I was a very, very physical child. I've been physical all my life. I have to move. I have to be involved in that kind of physicality. Um, I was an athlete both in, as a child, I was an athlete as uh, a high school person and also in college. I won my letters in baseball. I was welterweight boxing champion in college. However, uh, my sister was being taken to a local ballet school where I grew up in the suburbs of New York City. And I used to hang out on the streets and get into physical trouble. And one day while I was about nine or ten years old, I got knocked unconscious by a baseball, dragged home by my pals unconscious, and then they ran. But a neighbor had seen it, explained it. To my mother, she got very upset and said, okay, we cannot trust you on the streets anymore. You are coming with us. So I got dragged to my sister's ballet class. I was not thrilled. I was about eight, somewhere in that, in that range. I was very embarrassed. I was the only male. 40 giggling girls, their mothers, and me. Uh, I, I, I did not like that. I did not like that at all. However, uh, I was sitting there and they started to jump and I said, oh, okay, this I can relate to. And I went in the back of the room and I started flying around and doing all of this and the teacher said to my mother, you either get him out of here or put him in tights at the bar. So the next day, there I was in tights at the bar and I began my first pleading. I began to move, but I felt odd. I felt very strange wearing tights. It's a, an oddity for me. So I didn't want to have anyone know this. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was a two-flight walk-up uh, to this school. And I was so embarrassed, I wore my baseball uniform, my cap, my bat, and I used to walk up backwards. And I was rationalizing that if anyone saw me, if any of my friends saw me, they might think I was going out to play baseball and not to go in and be a ballet dancer. Uh, but at any rate, uh, my sister proceeded and then said, I'm finished. She stopped when she was 17. My father then said to me, enough of this, you are, you are going to college. And I said, I, I really don't want to. He sent me to a military college. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Marine Transportation. But while I was there, I won my letters in baseball. I was well to a boxing gym. And I was keeping my physicality going, but it was not enough. I had suddenly fallen in love with this thing uh, called ballet. Uh, it was amazing to me that you could speak with your body. But in addition to that, it's a mind-driven physicality. So I got enraptured in all of this sort of stuff. At any rate, my sister quits, my father says, enough of this, off I go to college. I'm there, terribly frustrated. I finally said, when I got my degree, I gave it to my father and I said, that's for you. For me, I'm now going to be a ballet dancer. So I had all of this physical kind of stuff that was going, but I hadn't danced for years, so I had to go back and I had to reinvestigate what all of this stuff was, what it was about. And I got so fascinated with it that I continue now seeking more and more. It's an infinite uh, uh, form. Uh, there's no end to what you can do, what you can learn in all of this stuff. So there I was, trained at George Balanchine School, the School of American Ballet. Uh, now I'm in his company, and I, I'm surrounded by genius. There is George Balanchine, Jerome Robbins, Lincoln Kirstein, and once in a while, Igor Stravinsky. It was not a world that I knew, but it was a world that I wanted to know about. So I continued this ongoing investigation into all of this stuff. I had a lovely 20-year career at the New York City Ballet, and when I stopped dancing, I said to myself, well, what do I do with the rest of my life? Uh, I think I want to be a director. 
But there is no educational process in America to learn how to be a director. So what I did was I found two very, very bad, very, very small companies and offered myself to them. Uh, in that way, I could learn how to handle problems because if you're not a very good company, you have problems. So that's how I figured out how to be a director. It took me five to six years to learn that. And once I had learned this, I had, I thought, such a wonderful grasp for the rest of my life. And that was to give back. Ballets uh, that George Valentine Robbins had made for me, those were works that serviced me. Now, the reverse came along. I respected and serviced those works. Uh, so having been exposed to the Balanchines, to the Robbins, to the School of American Ballet, and so on, plus my own investigation uh, gave me such a wonderful, wonderful sense of what I had been living and also now what I could pass on. This is a passing art form, body to body, but also mind to mind. Okay. I was brought up by genius. I was brought up by George Balanchine, Jerome Robbins. These were the major, major movers and shakers of the ballet world way back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and even into the 80s. Uh, now, these geniuses, from time to time, would do work on myself. Wow. So I began to understand more and more about not just the technique of it, but the actual performing thereof. A very, very different thought, very, very different idea to work in a classroom or to be presenting yourself on stage. So those two guys over almost 20 years at the New York City Ballet provided me with a basis upon which I could then proceed. Uh, and I did not believe it was over. I believed that I had to continue this investigation. And up until the last day I danced, I was investigating. Then I stopped dancing and I said, what do I do? Continue the investigation. And the important thing would be if I were to put a repertoire together, such as a Balanchine repertoire, Robbins repertoire, or any other kind of repertoire, uh, I could do them the way they were originally intended. So that's the major lesson that I have learned from these incredible individuals.